So how fast is it? Well, it's ridiculously fast. Hello, I am Scorp, and previously I'd made a video on how to dual boot a 64 gigabyte Steam Deck. And to accomplish this, I moved my entire home directory to an SD card and gave as much space as possible to Windows, which was 47 gigabytes. Unfortunately, that's just not enough for Windows. All I'd installed was basically the drivers, Steam, and a few other things, uh, Oculus software, because we're doing some VR as well. And it's just full, and it's basically unmanageable. And also, uh, I really hate switching the SD card as well. So I bit the bullet and just went out and bought one of these. Note that the Western Digital is just for scale. This is just a standard hard drive that I was using in my external enclosure. But this little one is an SK Hynx BC711. And this is a 256 SSD, so basically I'm moving one step up in the Steam Deck ladder. You may ask why I've gone for a 256 rather than anything bigger, and basically it was just because it was the most cost effective. I picked this up pretty damn cheap for like 40 euros, and the cheapest 512 I could see was about 120, 130, and I was just not willing to pay that much for it. So I'm just going to wait until the prices come down a little bit, maybe. I'll just see how I'll get on with this. So I've got, I'll have an internal drive of 256 and my SD card, which is 512. So that should be enough. I'm not doing all my gaming on this thing. I've already got a main computer, which has four terabytes worth of games on it. And, you know, I can only play one at a time, so I, sh I really should get a bit better at just having the games that I'm actually playing on there. So let's get to it. So as you can see, I'm going to skip over this quite quickly. There's probably other better videos of people doing this anyway on YouTube, so I'm not going to reinvent the wheel and show you mine. But essentially, take off the back eight screws pry it apart with either some mobile phone tools or you can do what I did and, and use uh, guitar picks I found easier. And once you remove this shield here, please do remember to unplug the battery before you do any work on your deck. And also do remember to take out the SD card. I almost forgot. <laughs> thankfully, uh, thankfully I saw it at the last minute when I was just about to pry that side of the console open. And so there it is, the original SSD, or in this case, the eMMMC card, which is B&M keyed M2, or NGFF, I believe people used to call them. <laughs> and I'm replacing it here with the SK, whatever number it is, I forget. So simply remove the foil from the original drive and stick it around the new drive. Th this apparently helps with um, EMI and probably some heat, who knows. Valve will know. I didn't really look into it, but I assume because it's there, it should be there. So I thought I'd put it back on. And then once the SD card's back in the deck, simply screw it back in, and then screw on the shield, and then and click all your deck back together, nice and easy. Oh, and don't forget to plug the battery back in. So originally this video was going to start with me in Ubuntu using Gparted to copy all my Linux partitions and my Windows partitions to the new drive. But apparently I'd made an absolute tit of it. So when I did boot up, uh, it tried to boot into Windows, which just blue screened to death completely. It wasn't showing the Linux partition at all. So instead of trying to fix it, well, actually I did try to fix it, but I made a tit of that as well. I decided the easiest course of action would just be to re-image it. So I stuck in the recovery disk from Steam and ran it, which nuked everything on the drive, including the Windows partition. So once the recovery disk had run, it's simply a case of rebooting the system and waiting for the Steam OS to reinstall. Now once this is complete, we now need to make some space for our Windows partition. So once again, I'm going to stick in my Ubuntu Live CD, and from here, I'm just going to use disks just to resize my home partition. I decided to save 150 gigabytes for the Steam Deck, and I'm giving Windows 80. So this 80 will basically just be for Windows and for programs, and basically all the games will be stored on the SD card. So I already have a video guide on how to dual boot Windows from the 64 gig version. 
it's basically the same procedure so if you want to watch that you certainly can but essentially just go to the media creation tool on the windows website create that put it on a, a disc or a, a, an sd card i put mine on an sd card and then stick that in your deck and then find the partition that you've made free and install it on there just as normal no tricks with rufus no windows to go or anything just the standard normal windows media creation tool and of course once windows is installed you're going to need to find this page on the steam website and download all your drivers most important being the gpu drivers but do install them all on the last video i said i didn't install the wi-fi the bluetooth and the sd card drivers which seemed to work for a long time. But once I put this new hard drive in, I started getting problems with the Wi-Fi and then I started getting problems with the SD card. None of these problems I had before, but installing all these drivers fixed all these issues that I was having. So do install them all. Don't skip them like I did originally. So you now have two OSs on your Steam Deck and you might want to switch between them. And to do this, you need to hold down the volume down key and the power button. And this will bring up the boot manager. Uh, it might be the case that your Linux partition is now not showing because Windows has decided it needs to get rid of it. Naughty, naughty with Microsoft. So anyway, to get around this, what you're going to need to do, and apologies for the bad pictures here because my capture card cannot capture this part of the system, is when you're booting up, instead of holding the volume down button, you need to hold the volume up button. This will bring you to a bigger menu, which includes this option here which is boot from file. And you're gonna need to click this and then you need to go to browse. And you're probably gonna want to pick the first option, which is the ESP partition. And from here, you need to go to EFI, Steam OS, and there should be a file called steamcl.efi. And if you click this, it should launch you back into the Steam OS. Now, if you restart, the option should now have reappeared in your boot manager. It did for me at least. When I originally installed this on my 64 gigabytes uh, SSD, I had no such problems at all. Both systems showed up straight away in the boot manager, but this time around, when I installed it on this 256 drive, the uh, Linux partition was gone. So yeah, simply doing this uh, got it back. So just how fast is the new SSD? So to test this, I simply fired up Ubuntu again, like I did with my other tests for SD cards. So how fast is it? Well, it's ridiculously fast. It's 3000 megabits per second read speed and 1600 write speed. The internal EMMMC had a read speed of 270 megabytes per second and a write speed of 200 megabytes per second. I've not actually seen the read and write speeds of the official SSD in the 256 version of the Steam Deck, but I'm guessing it's probably somewhere similar, but yeah, it's so much faster than the internal EMMC. And there we have it. My Steam Deck is now set up as dual boot for SteamOS and Windows 11. My Windows 11 partition has 80 gigabytes, which is just going to be used for Windows and all the other programs like Epic Store and all the stores and anything else that I want. All the games are going to go on the SD card. And my SteamOS has 150 gigabytes of the internal SSD. So it's just going to be super fast, hopefully. I will be setting up my SD card so I can play games off the same partition, but that's going to be another video. In the meantime, you can also watch this video here of how I set up a NAS drive and I can play games from there on, well, on either SteamOS or Windows 11 or even off my main PC. Save some space. So thanks for watching. If you did indeed watch this far, I thank you very much. It was a lot of work. Catch you next time.